a sub called gang, right? So we got this problem here. We got this crane lift, and we got this crazy system going on. And it wants us to find a couple things, right? It wants us to find the force in BB, which is this tension force. And it wants us to find the components of the force at A. So let's go ahead and let's do that, right? So it wants us to start off by finding the force BD, right? So force BD, right, this tension force here. So let's go ahead and draw out all of our forces, right? So we know that we have a tension force here going from B to D. So that's gonna be, we can label that a force BD. So it goes from B to D. Now at A here, we're gonna have two forces. We're gonna have A in the X direction, which, or A in the Y direction is this one, and A in the X direction, right? So this is basically the support of A that it holds on this whole system. So then we have these two things. We have G1, right, which is like the, the body of the crane. And then we have G2, which is the other part of the crane. And both of these have a mass that's pulling down, right? So it tells us where the center of mass is. It tells us it's in the middle. So it's eight meters here, eight meters here. So in, the, in between those eight meters is G1. Or I guess we can label that force G1 which is just the force of gravity, right? Mass times gravity, we're given the mass, so we, can, we know what these are. So then G2 also has a force pulling down, which is force G2. And then here we're gonna label this force L. This is just the force of the weight pulling down. So here we go, we have one, two, three, four, five, six vectors. That looks pretty nice. So let's go ahead and find some stuff out, right? So we're trying to find force BD here, right? So let's think about what we know. Well, we know force G1, because we're given mass, we know what gravity is. Same thing with this one, same thing with this one. So then we're trying to find force BD. So if we want to, we're gonna find the moment around A, because if we find the moment around A, then we're gonna get rid of A1, AX and AY. Those are not gonna be part of that equation, and we're gonna know that the moment's equal to zero. Therefore, that's gonna allow us to find force BD. So let's go ahead and just do that. So moment around A, right? So if you're new to this, um, maybe check out some of my previous videos. Uh, we're just gonna assume that you know what you're doing here. So when you're doing the moment, you're gonna take the force of something in the X direction and then multiply it by the distance in the Y direction. So in this case here, this one has no force in the X direction, so we're not gonna use that. But it has a force in the Y direction, right? It has a force in the Y direction. So force G1, right? So it's pulling down. And that's gonna make this moment around A wanna go clockwise. So if it wants to go clockwise, we're gonna subtract it. So we're gonna take negative force G1. And now we're gonna to have to multiply it by its distance in the X direction since it acts in the Y direction. So it goes eight over, or so it goes eight up, but at an angle of 45 degrees. So if we wanna find how far it goes in the X, we're gonna take cosine. So the eight cosine 45. Nice. So then we're gonna to go to the next force here. So this is force BD. So force BD acts at an angle, so it's not just this, uh, something simple. So let's look at the X direction first. So it's pulling in the X direction this way. So this is gonna make it want to go counterclockwise, and in that case, we're gonna add it. So it's gonna be plus force BD. And we just want it in the X direction, so we're gonna say cosine of 35. So this right here is how much it acts in the X direction. It's positive because it makes it want to go counterclockwise. But then we have to multiply by the distance in the y direction. So it goes eight meters plus eight meters, so 16 meters, but at an angle of 45. So if we want to find the vertical distance, it's going to be eight plus eight sine of 45. So 16 sine of 45. Nice. And then we have to do it for the y version, right? So here it's pulling in a negative y. So if you pull a negative y here, it's going to make it want to go Clockwise, so then we're gonna to have to subtract this. So this is gonna be a multi-line problem for sure. So it's gonna be negative FBD. And then it's angle, right? It's going negative, so we wanna find just the Y direction, so it'll be sine of 35. And then we have to find its distance in the X direction. So it's distance in the X direction, it's 16 again, but it'll be cosine 45. Okay, so then we have to go on to this one here. So this is our next force, just going down the line. So force G2. So this one is pulling it down, which is gonna make it wanna rotate clockwise around A. So we're gonna subtract this one. So it'll be minus FG2. And then we have to take, because it's acting in the Y direction, we have to find its distance in the X direction. So its distance in the X direction we found here is 16 
cosine 45 to this point, but then we have to add another distance here, right? So we know by, uh, well, make sure my notes are right here. I think I'm missing an angle. Yeah, I am missing an angle. This angle we know is 30 degrees. So we're gonna take the distance from here to here, which is 16 cosine of 45 is the x distance from here to here. And then we have to take the x distance from here to here, which is gonna be three cosine 30. So this will be 16 cosine 45 plus three cosine of 30, right? Cool, then we're gonna do our next force. So this is our final force now. Uh, so here it's gonna be pulling down. So of course it's gonna be negative again. So negative uh, force L. And then we have to find its distance in the in the, uh, the what the x direction, right? Because it's pulling down in the y direction. So of course we found 16 cosine of 45 is to here, and then here it's going to be 3 plus 3, 6 cosine of 30 to get to here. So it's going to be 16 cosine 45 plus 6 cosine of 30 is that its x distance, and we know that its moments are equal to zero because it's in equilibrium, right? So we get this crazy thing. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take, right, so each one of these, I guess we can expand it. We know that force is equal to mass times acceleration, right? So each one of these forces, so force G1, or G1, is equal to mass times acceleration. So it's mass, G1 is 800, and then gravity 9.81. Same thing with force G2, it is equal to 400, times 9.81. And then uh, force L is equal to 200, 9.81, right? So basically you're gonna to wanna to substitute these right into here, here, and here. And then I'm just gonna simplify the math for you guys. But if you plug in those numbers, do all this math, and then move all your numbers to the other side of the equation, you're gonna get, I almost fell down. You're gonna get, because if you move it to the other side of zero, you'll get 100, 31,377 is equal to FBD. Now I'm just taking the FBD of each one of these and I'm combining them and factoring out the FBD. So you're gonna get cosine 35, just coming from this right here, 16 sine of 45, minus sine of 35, just coming from right here, cosine of 45. Right? And then, if, of course, if you just divide this over to there, you can solve this however you'd like to. This is just how I solved it in my notes. You're gonna get force BD is equal to 47,300 newtons. There you go. So let me write that over here. Forty-seven thousand three hundred newtons. Cool. So that's the pretty hard part A. So let's go down to part B, right? So part B wants us to find the component AX and AY. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all this. Keep that up there, that one will be useful. All right, so let's go on. So if we wanna find these things, we know that our sum of the forces are equal to zero. So that's what we're gonna do. So we know that some of the forces, let's start with some of the forces in the y direction. We know that some of the forces in the y is equal to zero. So let's add up the forces in the y direction, right? So of course we got A of y pointing up. Nice. Then we have G1 pointing down. So it's gonna be FG1. So FG1 we said is 800 times 9.81. Nice. Then uh, force BD is pulling down, right? So then we have to subtract FBD, which we, oh, I erased it, I'm so dumb. Okay. FBD is equal to 47300 newtons. Okay. So then we're going to take this number, 47,300, and then we have to find the vertical component, which is going to be sine, right? So sine of 35. That pulls down. Makes sense. Then what's next? So FG2. So FG2 is also pulling down. So then we said that is 409.81. And then FL is also pulling down. So then it's going to be 200, 
And we know that all of this is going to equal zero, right? We haven't said that the sum of the forces equal to zero. So then you're going to get Ay by moving all of this to the other side. A of y is equal to 40,900 newtons. Nice. Yep, makes sense. All right, so what's next, right? So force in the next direction. We know that this is also equal to zero because we're at equilibrium. So let's add up. So we know A of x pushes forward, or I guess supposedly it does it push forward. Uh, so then FBD is pulling backwards, so we're going to subtract. So 47,300, 47,300. We want the vertical or the horizontal components, so we're going to take cosine of 45 or 35. And that's it. All right, so of course we're just going to move this to the other side. Now we get A of X is equal to 3,000 or 38,700 newtons. There you go. So that's how you solve this one. There's a whole lot of stuff going on, but uh, basically it's the same as any other problem, just with more forces, more vectors. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, have a good one. Peace.